Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> I'm John Frederick, Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, and I'm delighted to welcome you all to President Romo's fifth annual State of the University Address. Thank you for being here today. This event is an opportunity for UTSA faculty, staff, and students to hear directly from President Romo about the university's progress in our vision to become a premier research university, and most important, how that translates into opportunities for our students. We have made great gains in a number of areas, and all of us as Roadrunners have much to be proud of. It is my distinct pleasure this afternoon to introduce one of the students we are proud of, the president of our student government association, Zachary Dunn. Zach is a junior finance major from San Antonio who previously served the SGA as its business affairs chair and college of business senator. As SGA president, Zach is working with student government leaders from around the city and is the founding chair of the San Antonio Higher Education Representative Assembly. He also serves on the UT System Chancellor's Student Advisory Committee as the chair of legislative and financial affairs. Zach encourages his fellow students to get involved on campus and takes that advice to heart for himself. In addition to his work for SGA, he is a member of the university's investment society and a recent graduate of the Summer Law School Prepar Preparation Academy. He also has actively sought to broaden his own perspective by participating in leadership development opportunities offered through our Student Leadership Center, including the Civil Rights Exploration Trip, the Progression, and the Texas Conference for Women. His accolades include being the 2013 recipient of the Jane Finling Award for Excellence in Student Leadership. This year, he was also crowned Mr. What a Man, <laughs> a scholarship pageant sponsored by the UTSA Black Student Union. Please join me in welcoming from the UTSA graduating class of 2015, Zach Dunn, What a Man. Students, faculty, staff, administration, and everyone who showed up today, it is my sincere honor to be able to introduce my leader, our president, Dr. Ricardo Romo. But before I delve into what makes Dr. Ricardo Romo such a visionary leader, I would like to take a step back and introduce someone that is quintessential to not only the Romo family, but the UTSA Roadrunner family. Now, I'm not going to say that President Romo's wife, Dr. Harriet Romo, is his better half, um, but I think we can all agree that she is certainly a strong complementary half to our university president. It is my belief that through all the work that she does and all that she looks to accomplish at our university alongside our president, that we continue to outperform in the state of Texas and in this nation. Will you please join me in showing our appreciation of gratitude to her service to Dr. Harriet Romo. Now, back when Dr. Romo was entering college in his life, there were no four-year public institutions in the city of San Antonio, and there was no UTSA to serve his educational needs. So himself and a lot of his counterparts, you know, those were, that were graduating at the same time he was, they had to leave the city if they wanted to see their potential realized through higher education. But Dr. Romo was fortunate enough to receive a track scholarship to the University of Texas at Austin. And what he learned there from his teachers and his professors, and especially the mentors he was blessed enough to have, really inspired him to have a new vision. And he took that vision back to UTSA to see it become the next prominent university in the state of Texas. And with that vision in mind, 14 years ago, he applied to be this university's president. And in that time span, we have more bachelors, masters, doctoral programs than ever before. We have seen our university grow in size from 18,000 to 29,000 students. We have more facilities being built, more research being done, and more students leaving San Antonio with bright futures than ever before. In this time, we've also added a football team that our community can rally behind. We have established strong networks with local community leaders, and we've also partnered with many of San Antonio's other higher educational institutions in the pursuit of top-tier education. But you know what's more important than all that? You know what makes my president special? His connection to the students. I never thought coming to UTSA that I would ever meet this university's president. Never, it never even crossed my mind. I never thought he'd show up for the Harlem Shake. I, he showed up. And I never thought I would be more impressed with the university's leader than when I met Dr. Romo. And I can actually tell you the story of when we first met. 
So I wasn't student body president. I, really, I wasn't really even a part of SGA at the time. I was just coming up at UTSA, really trying to get my name out there and get involved. And we were at the Frost Distinguished Lecture Series in the College of Business. And when, when we were there, we had like a little luncheon portion afterwards, and somehow I got seated at you know, the head honcho table. So freshman, you know, scared out of my mind, didn't know what to say, what to do. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, Dr. Romo was actually seated to my left. And he did something that day that surprised me more than anything that could have happened that day. He asked me a question. <laughs> uh, and he asked me, he said, hey, Zach, what did you do in your high school days? Like, you know, where are you from? Kind of what's your past? And I told him about my, my wrestling days and my high school football days. And for the next 30 minutes, I do not think Dr. Romo even looked at his food. He kept asking me questions, kept engaging me, kept wondering who I was and where I was going. You know what I felt like at that time? I felt like I mattered. I felt like Dr. Rumo cared about the students, and they mattered. And that's something I'll have with me for the rest of my life. One simple conversation that Dr. Romo had with me, he probably thought nothing of it. 30 minute conversation with a, a bright student, he thinks I'm bright, you know. You know. <laughs> I'm, not gonna hear, I'm not gonna tell him he's wrong. Um, <laughs> but I'll have that with me for the rest of my life. And it's something that, you know, you never forget. The nerves melted away. I was comfortable. But that's the connection I've seen Dr. Romo make with multiple students. He's in the cafe all the time. He's walking the hallways quite a bit. He's always out and engaged with the students. And to me, that's what makes him special. Dr. Romo knows that every student and employee here at UTSA has come from greatness and can look to achieve even greater things. He knows that everyone needs the best opportunities to achieve success and he lives that belief on a daily basis. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming my friend and our president, Dr. Ricardo Romo. Zach has put me in a, in a hot seat here, a lot of pressure to live up to all the things that you, uh, you said. But I do, um, I am grateful for you, Zach, what you're doing in terms of one of our leaders and all the things that you have helped us with this past year. And, uh, and especially uh, the fact that you have connected me with a lot of other students. Um, you, you make a point of introducing me to people who are the upcoming leaders, so thank you for that. And, uh, and I want to thank everybody who is here today, and uh, on, certainly I want to thank the students and the faculty and staff, and, and it's just a, a privilege to be with you all today. Um, and to our administration group, the provost, uh, Frederick, you, you saw, saw him a minute ago, and our vice presidents are here, our deans are here, our faculty senate's uh, right over here, staff council is here, uh, a lot of student leaders, all of you, uh, thank you for being here and for the commitment you have for UTSA. I'm especially happy, very happy to, to welcome the nearly 3,500 freshmen and nearly 2,000 transfer students who join us at UTSA this fall. Students from more than 50 states and 85 countries make up our campus. I look forward to this uh, event every year because it gives us the opportunity to pause for a few minutes and reflect on where we've been and where we're going. It gives us a moment to celebrate our successes and to envision the next steps in our journey to Tier 1. Most importantly, it gives us a moment to consider the, the greater purpose of our work. No matter how many times I give a state of the university address, I always come back to one simple belief. I think Zach said it. Everything we do must be about our students. This past year was no exception. Just think about some of our accomplishments. In the last academic year, we graduated one of the largest classes ever, more than 5,800 students. Our May commencement was so large, we held it at the Alamo Dome. I could have never imagined that we would see the day when we need that kind of space. In the audience were nearly 25,000 parents, family members, and friends. It was a great commencement. I remember one graduate who was the first in her family to go to college. She had 24 members in the audience. It was like each one of them was receiving a degree. They were their own cheering section. 
On the other side was a 62-year-old man who was fulfilling his 30-year-old dream of obtaining a college degree. He wanted to show his children and grandchildren that anything is possible. There he was receiving his diploma. His wife, children, and grandchildren were there too. They were beaming with pride. It couldn't have been a better day for those graduates or for UTSA. Being in the Alamo Dome gives our graduates a chance to invite as many friends and family as they'd like to have and share this wonderful, special moment. We're so pleased, and we plan to hold this commencement at the Alamo Dome for years to come. We've had a phenomenal year at UTSA. You can see it all around us. On the main campus, the North Paseo building is going up. You see the cranes. When it's completed next October, we'll be able to bring that staff back to campus from University Heights where they can be closer to students. We'll be bringing other programs like cybersecurity together in one location for the first time to foster greater collaboration and research success. And we'll be saving more than a million dollars a year by having all those functions in our own building. Just a few weeks ago, we cut the ribbon on San Saba Residence Hall, Zach was there. It added, uh, it added more than 600 beds to our on-campus housing. We have created learning communities in San Saba with college-specific floors, on-site tutoring, and study spaces that makes it easy for students to work together. A new faculty center is nearing completion in the John Peace uh, Library. It will give our professors a place to meet and collaborate in support of our students. We will be ho holding a grand opening in the spring. Across the campus, we built a new football practice fields, four fields that are being shared with the rec center and with our band, the great spirit of San Antonio Sosa. I was there during the first week of practice for the football team. I have to tell you, this was an excited group of athletes. They beamed with pride as they were the first to walk into the field, built with the highest quality astroturf. And for the first time, the football team didn't have to lug their gear off campus to practice and then race back to campus for classes. This practice field is truly top tier. Just last month, we opened Park West Track and Field Complex. To mark the occasion, I ran a ceremonial first sprint with a group of children and students. I emphasize children. And I, because I made it a point to warn the kids, look, you cannot run faster than the president. I mean, they were about, <laughs> they were about that high, but I was worried anyway. <laughs> Luckily for me, they listened and they let me win the race. It was an exciting day for UTSA. We've been building traditions too. Have you noticed that 11 foot um, road runner on campus lately? Okay, I'm not saying you should do anything yet. I don't, definitely don't feed it. Uh, but there was one new tradition and soon you'll be able to identify what we're gonna do here, pat it, take, you know, take a picture with it for sure. There are many ways to measure and this is just one of the great traditions that we're introducing. Thanks to the students, it was a student idea to bring a, a rowdy home. Um, and there are many things that we're doing for our students. One of those is, uh, is how we prepare them for the global workforce. A year ago, there was a big issue weighing on the, our community. It was the notion that San Antonio was experiencing a brain drain. The theory was that we're not able to attract or keep the best brains uh, power here in San Antonio. Graham Weston, the, Graham, um, the chairman and co-founder of Rackspace, was worried that we would not be able to build the workforce that we needed tomorrow if we couldn't draw upon educated young people into our city. He was also concerned about providing a great education for those who are already here. So he and the 8020 Foundation funded a study to better understand the issue. What they discovered was not what they expected. Instead of losing brain power, it turns out that San Antonio is a destination for college-educated young people seeking great jobs. In fact, we're right up there with Austin, virtually tied for first place in the growth of college graduate migration to the city. To fully live up to our potential, though, Graham Weston challenged higher education to up its game. We have to be on the cutting edge of education if we're going to prepare our young people for the world economy. We must be leaders, not followers, if we're going to be remain, remain a city of brain gain. Graham Weston knows this. That is why his, this past year, the 8020 Foundation endowed four professorships in open cloud computing at UTSA. One million dollars has been dedicated to these professorships because of the foundation and because of the generosity of HEB. This past year, HEB 
committed $5 million in matching funds for endowed positions across the university. Today, there are 13 of these new positions. We now have 60 committed endowments for professorships and chairs. This has, been, has had a significant impact on our ability to attract top faculty to support our students. The 8020 Foundation and its partners have also contributed more than $600,000 in open computing hardware. This will allow our researchers to better collaborate and create new knowledge. This partnership gives our students opportunities for excellence that they never had before. And this is just the beginning. As it evolves, this partnership has taken the potential to have make San Antonio and UTSA the epicenter for open cloud computing technology and innovation. It makes a degree uh, from UTSA ever more valuable. By the way, Rackspace has also hired so many UTSA alums for everything from tech side to the business side that they have a special name for our graduates. You know, they call themselves Rackers, but for us, they, they're Roadrunner Rackers. Just ask uh, Chris Rosas what he thinks of UTSA graduates. Chris is in charge of Rackspace Global Tax Department. He has a staff of 13. Nine are from UTSA. Chris is a double UTSA alum. He earned a bachelor's degree in accounting and then his master's degree in business administration. He will tell you that his preference is to come to UTSA when he looks and needs top tier employees. So great things are happening for UTSA students. Great things will continue to happen if we stay focused on student success. It is exciting that our efforts are being recognized. This year, the Shanghai University Academic Rankings of World Universities named UTSA among the top 500 universities in the world. We're measured against more than 1,200 universities in 43 different countries in academic and research performance. And for the second year in a row, UTSA has been named by Times Higher Education as one of the top 100 young universities in the world. Only eight universities made the list. The quality of our teaching, citations, international outlook, and research weighed heavily in our favor. Now that is top tier. This kind of environment gives our students access to excellence. They deserve it. This past summer, I had the opportunity to speak before the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce. Sam Dawson is here. I talked about top tier. Why is it important? Why is it important? and why the, what impact does it have on San Antonio. While official designation as a top tier one university may be some time off, I told the audience that I had another view. I believe we become a top tier university when we act it, when we believe it, and when we live it. And folks, we are acting it, we're believing it, and we're living it every single day. And we're not just doing this for ourselves but for San Antonio and for Texas. We are doing it for our community and for our students. We're defining excellence so we can give our students their very best educational opportunities. Let me give you an example of what excellence looks like. Sarai Lara studied bilingual education at UTSA. When she began going to school as a child, she only spoke Spanish. It was a challenge for her to learn English and excel in her classes, yet she did. She dreamt that one day returning to the classroom as an adult to teach children in similar situations. After enrolling in UTSA, she had an opportunity to go back into the classroom as a student teacher. She wanted to work with kids who had the same background and challenges she had had in school. Sarai found that the opportunity at Jaffetz Elementary School in San Antonio School District. So every day, Monday through Friday, for an entire semester, she traveled to Jaffetz to work with first graders. She said of those kids, I really enjoy seeing them learn. When the little light bulb goes on, it's exciting to know that I've connected with them. Sarai is like many of our students in the College of Education and Human Development and all across our university. They have a passion for learning and they're shaping the future. However, there is one difference with Sarai. To complete her student teaching, she had to travel 162 miles round trip every day from her home in Uvalde to the elementary school. Yes, 162 miles every day, five days a week for an entire semester. And that's commitment. It's commitment to excellence and commitment to students. Valerie Sullivan knows about commitment. She's a master's student in the College of Public Policy, studying for a career in social work. Valerie and seven other UTSA students spent the past spring in Austin. They were part of our legislative scholars program coordinated by the Honors College. 
Valerie dedicated more than 1,000 hours of her time to an internship in the off office of the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Valerie worked on policy initiatives. She said it was one of the most rewarding experiences of her life. And you don't get opportunities like that without being committed to excellence. We owe it to the people like Sarai and Valerie to give them top-tier educational opportunities. That's why investment in UTSA is so important. Our very first capital campaign is about supporting students through scholarships, fellowships, student activities, the arts, athletics, and study abroad programs, <clears throat> and supportive research. The re response from the community has been overwhelming. We had a goal of raising $120 million by 2015. This past May, we reached that goal two and a half years early. So it's time to do more, we thought. So we now set a new goal of raising an additional $55 million before the campaign ends. And this will translate into more investments in graduate students who conduct research, investments in undergraduate talent to bring the brightest minds to UTSA. It will mean investing more faculty so students learn from top tier scholars. And investing in athletics to enhance student life and promote community. By the way, I'm not supposed to say this, but this morning I had an unusual thing happen. Marjorie your friends will tell you, it's unusual. So about, 10, about uh, 11 o'clock in the morning, somebody came up and delivered a million dollar check. Well, we were happy, a million dollar check. We don't see those a lot. At noontime, we got a million dollar check in the mail, another one. So I said, we, we're doing good. We're gonna hit that 55. <laughs> we're gonna hit that 55 early, Margie. Okay, <clears throat> and get another go. Amanda Nolan knows what happens when you invest in faculty and students. She is a doctoral student in the Department of Chemistry working on stem cell research. This summer, Amanda was chosen from a pool of 20,000 applicants from across the world to attend the meeting of Nobel laureates as students in Germany. This is where the world's top graduate and postdoctoral students come together to exchange ideas. The opportunities Amanda had at UTSA gave her this access to the best and brightest minds. Our students deserve the very best because they are in my opinion, the very best. UTSA is a university of first choice, and it shows. This fall, nearly 65% of our incoming freshmen came from the top quarter of their class. 87% are in ranked in the top half. At the same time, our student diversity numbers are stronger than ever. We raise our admission standards, and students like what they see. Top-tier students want to come here because they know they will be surrounded by other top students, by top faculty, and they will get a top tier education. Eric Fickey is one of those students. Eric graduated from San Juan Christian High School with a 4.18 GPA and an SAT score of 1490. He is interested in studying cybersecurity. Eric considered three schools, Johns Hopkins, Stanford, and UTSA. Eric chose UTSA. He's a freshman this fall. When you have a great student like Eric, you attract great faculty too. This fall, more than 60 mem new, new faculty members have joined us from some of the best universities in the world. They come from Italy, Germany, Mexico, Canada, China, Spain, and Switzerland. They come from across America. And when we, attract, when we attract that top faculty and talent, it enriches our campus and it enriches our community. We see the proof of that in the work of our students and faculty researchers. We have new intellectual property disclosures nearly every week. In fact, there were so many, we formed our own commercialization office to help students and faculty support our, our support this great startups. More than 1,000 students have been through the UTSA Center for Innovation and Technology Entrepreneurship Boot Camp. Over the past five years, the number of UTSA students who are creating companies continues to increase. Today, there are more than 100 student companies participating in Roadrunner business incubators. There is pioneering work taking place and it's changing lives. This includes the invention of it by a team of eight undergraduates who created a thermoelectric cooling system for amputees who wear artificial limbs. Their company, Lito Solutions, developed a product that prevents heat buildup in the area where the natural and artificial limbs meet. This provides greater comfort and reduces respiration and often causes irritation and infection. This product has a potential to make a huge difference for the users. The students participated in UTSA Student Technology Venture Competition this year. They received 
thousands of dollars in cash and business services to help launch their venture. That competition, by the way, is the largest in the country, bringing together business and engineering seniors. Last year, I mentioned another group of students that had won that venture competition. They had developed an infant head guard that prevents deformities in babies. This year, their company, Evictus Medical, is making huge progress. They have now hired a CEO to help commercialize their invention. Soon, they will launch their own initial rounds of funding. This is the kind of excellence that occurs when students have the opportunity to work alongside top-tier faculty and researchers. From the time they step foot on campus, from, as they walk from, to the end when they walk across the stage to receive their diploma, it is our job to be sure every student has the opportunity they need to be successful and the support they need. When a student enters UTSA as a freshman, they think they know what's ahead for them, what discipline they major in, what courses they're going to take, and how to study. But that's not always the case. And we need to help them prepare to succeed. That's why we are redefining the student experience at UTSA. This year, we're completely transforming academic advising. The academic student relationship is so important. It's key to student retention and success. I know we have dedicated advisors at UTSA. We are focusing on students establishing strong mentoring relationships with their advisors. Rather than being grouped by college, advisors are being grouped by cluster of primary and secondary majors. They will be trained in the majors that students start out in. And they will be trained in the programs students are most likely to transfer into, and if they change their majors. With this model, we estimate that 80% of our students will be able to keep the same advisor all the way through graduation. Our advisors will get to know their students better, and the students will benefit. With an assigned caseload of students, advisors will be able to take a greater role and have a greater satisfaction in the success of our students. Also this year, we're implementing the Degrees Works software. It allows students to choose classes and track their progress. This will help them to be more self-sufficient. The new advising structure will be in place by this spring, just in time for summer orientation for next fall's entering class. And also this semester, University College is piloting the academic inquiry course. Students will develop solid research and learn how different disciplines pursue and create new knowledge. Beginning next fall, all entering students will take courses as part of their first year experience. Another key aspect of the freshman year experience is that peer mentoring program. These peer mentors are trained to help first year students adjust to all aspects of college life, academic and social. So by this time next fall, all of our new students will have assigned advisors and peer mentors. It's not just about helping students pass courses. It's about building a support network for students when they enter UTSA, and about having a support network when they leave UTSA as one of our nearly 100,000 alumni. We are here for our students. Remember how hard they work and how much they persevere. Now, I know this firsthand as as a college student back a long time ago. So when I was at the University of Texas at Austin, I needed to take a language course. Since I spoke Spanish, there was the assumption, not a very good one, that learning Portuguese would be easy for me. <laughs> so I signed up for a class. Was I surprised? It was one of the toughest courses I had ever taken. But I gave it my all. I went to every class, I sat in the front row, I asked questions, I studied, I practiced, and I wasn't going to let it defeat me. My final grade was not as good as I would have liked. But I made it through the course and put it behind me. No more Portuguese. But as we all know, the past has a way of catching up to us. So in 1998, I went to the most important job interview of my life, to be the next president of the University of Texas at San Antonio. When I went into the committee interview, I wasn't entirely sure who I'd be meeting with. So you can imagine my surprise when the person sitting next to me was my college Portuguese teacher. <laughs> Honest. Can you imagine you're in the most important interview of your life, and you're being interviewed by the college professor whose class you did poorly in? <laughs> the only thing that could have made that whole episode worse was if she had been started interviewing me in Portuguese. <laughs> but this was not a deliberate ploy to bring in my college professor to rattle me, no. Nothing like that. The fact is that my Portuguese teacher had left the classroom and had gone on to a very distinguished career in university administration. 
At the time of my interview to become president of UTSA, my Portuguese teacher had already been university president for 10 years. She still is the president of the University of Texas at El Paso. It was Diana Natalicio. To me, she'll always be Professora Natalicio. And I might, in, I might add, whose football team we just beat last Saturday. <laughs> Now, if I could only figure out how to say that in Portuguese. <laughs> the truth is our paths have crossed before. I, they'd crossed before, before, before I became a finalist um, for this job. So we'd already had a chance to talk about all those old, good old days in Portuguese class. The funny thing is that when I told her how difficult that course had been for me, she was surprised. She didn't remember my grade, thank goodness. And she didn't remember me struggling in the course. In fact, she remembered me as a student who sat in the front row, worked hard, and stayed focused. She remembered me as a student who was engaged. Years later, she didn't remember the grade, she didn't remember the outcome, but she remembered my efforts. And in the years since then, the thought has crossed my mind that I might just be the president of UTSA because I sat in the front row of that Portuguese class. You see, our efforts matter. The efforts of our students make in what they, their efforts in the students make in the classroom matter too, as do the efforts of our staff and faculty support them in every way possible. Students must be our highest priority. Don't Sarai, Valerie, Amanda, Eric deserve our very best every day? Don't all of our students deserve the very best every day? Everything we do must be about engaging our students, our commitment, our work. This is what makes their dreams possible. Whether you work directly with students or in a support function, whether you're a professor in the classroom or a researcher in the lab, wherever you are at the downtown campus, ITC, one of our satellite locations, or here in the main campus, you make a difference. You help create opportunities for excellence for our students. That's what being a top tier is all about. So let's act it, let's believe it, let's live it every day. For our students, they deserve the very best. Thank you for all you do for UTSA, and go runners! For our next speaker this afternoon, no. <laughs> we invite you all to stay for refreshments and to enjoy a communi community with the rest of us. Thank you again for coming this afternoon.